Hello, I'm John Gersbeck, Chief Financial Officer of Citigroup. This morning, we reported results for the second quarter of 2013, and I'd like to take a few moments to go through them with you. After adjusting for credit and debt valuation adjustments, Citigroup earned $3.9 billion. On a per share basis, that comes to $1.25, significantly higher than the $1 per share we earned in the second quarter of last year. These results were driven by an 8% increase in revenues and a 25% decline in credit losses. Expenses rose slightly by 1%, primarily driven by higher legal costs in city holdings and a $60 million charge we took representing the estimated impact of the Federal Reserve's proposed supervisory assessment on large banks. Excluding these items, core operating expenses actually declined 1%, largely because of the repositioning actions we announced last December. In our core businesses, revenues grew 7%, while expenses declined 2%. Overall loan growth was 4%, and we generated solid revenue growth in each of our four geographical regions, resulting in pre-tax earnings of more than $1 billion in each of them. Let's take a quick look at each of Citi's core businesses. Our international consumer banking franchise remains impacted by the low interest rate environment, yet most underlying drivers showed sustained momentum. Total average loans were up 5% from the prior year, card purchase sales rose 9%, and investment sales grew 36%. In addition, both Latin America and Asia returned to positive operating leverage for the first half of 2013, and we expect to maintain this performance for the rest of the year. Our North America consumer franchise was also impacted by the low rate environment and by lower mortgage revenues, but there were several signs of progress. Deposits, commercial loans, and card purchase sales all increased, and credit quality improved with losses and delinquencies both down. In securities and banking, revenues grew 21% from last year. Our equities business in particular made a strong showing with revenues up 68% for the year and 14% for the quarter, a further sign of the rebounding of this business in the wake of our restructuring. In fact, all of our businesses in this segment of the company performed well with pre-tax earnings up 80% year over year and expenses down 2%. The low rate environment continues to act as a drag on our transaction services business. Yet, the volume drivers for the franchise continued to show momentum. Average trade loans grew 16% year over year. Average deposits were up 7%. Assets under custody grew by 10% and settlement volumes in our securities and fund services business grew 13%. We also made progress on two of our company's top priorities. City Holdings ended the quarter with $131 billion in assets, down 12% in the quarter, representing the largest percentage decrease since 2010. Importantly, the net loss from Holdings was only $579 million substantially lower than in prior quarters. And we utilized a further $600 million of our deferred tax assets, bringing the total utilized for the first half of the year to $1.3 billion. Finally, our Tier 1 common ratio rose to an estimated 10% on a Basel III basis. Citi remains one of the best capitalized banks in the industry. These second quarter results show that Citi continues to make progress in improving the consistency and quality of our earnings. The key is to remain true to our strategy while maintaining a tight focus on execution. To get more in-depth information on today's earnings report, visit Citi's Investor Relations webpage, linked below this video. Thank you once again for your interest in City, and I look forward to reviewing our third quarter results with you in October.